During the 4th of July holiday weekend, my husband Phil and I were visiting his stepmom Louise in their hometown of Washington, New Jersey. Mom told us that she had been reminiscing about years ago, in fact, about her six years in Baton Rouge, Louisiana from 1954 to 1960. She said she wished she knew about the lives of the 28 African-American little boys to whom she had first been their dorm mom and then became the assistant to the director of the Blunden Home and Orphanage. Mom supervised the young boys ages 6 to 12 and wondered especially about a boy named Claiborne Houghton who was born with cerebral palsy and wore leg braces. Mom said, if I only have touched one life for the Lord, my service would be worth it. Suddenly, God gave me this idea to Google Claiborne's name to see if he, we could find out where he lives and how his life has unfolded since mom was looking after him 63 years ago. Immediately on my smartphone, a picture came up and an online article entitled, Disability Employment Takes Center Stage at DIA, Defense Intelligence Agency. The article went on to give a brief biography of Claiborne. It said this, a retired senior executive service and former acting deputy assistant secretary of defense for equal opportunity was born with cerebral palsy and blindness in one eye, and he wore leg braces until he was 10 years old. Aside from physical challenges, he also faced being a ward of the Blunden Orphanage Home in Baton Rouge, Louisiana for 12 years before reuniting with his family. Despite these early childhood obstacles, Houghton achieved bachelor's and master's degrees holds an honorary doctorate in humane letters and had a fruitful career. He later became one of the first African-American charter members of the Federal Senior Executive Service. This is what Claiborne said, but what is I am most proud of is my time working in the field of equal opportunity, diversity, and inclusion. Claiborne said, people with disabilities are the largest minor minority group in the U.S. Despite progress, we still have work to do because Americans with disabilities, including our veterans, make up 5% of our U.S. population. But we are still unemployed at twice the rate of those who are able-bodied. Claiborne authored the first Department of Defense-Wide Employment Program, for people with disabilities. In 1982, he wrote the first Department of Defense Equal Opportunity Policy for civilians. Claiborne said, people with disabilities want to work and have the ability to do so. That we can't is rooted in that age old thought that we need to be taken care of and that we can't do certain things. With accommodation, we can. He went on to explain an often ignored truth. No one is immune to developing a disability. No one will make it through life without a temporary or permanent mental or physical disability. We work in a particular agency where you could become disabled doing your job, serving the Department of Defense. Houghton challenged his audience to remember one thing. Don't assume inabilities. People with disabilities, he said, have enriched all of our lives, listing President Franklin Roosevelt, Helen Keller, and Tony Award winner, winner Ali Stroker. Do not read a book by its cover when it comes to people with disabilities. We can do and want to do a whole lot. After I read that article about Claiborne, God inspired me to research more online about him. It was then I read a couple of his quotes, such as, there's no place where God is not present. At the conclusion of one of Claiborne's writings, he had said, to God be the glory. 
when his Facebook page popped up, he had posted one uplifting Bible verse after another. And even his Facebook presence is inspiring and filled with his grounded faith in the Lord. Even though mom told me, Janie, I just had a small part in Claiborne's life. I considered how important mom's life has been with her experiences at Blunden Orphanage. Claiborne Houghton's life has been amazing as he's influenced on a national level the lives of millions of Americans with disabilities. But mom was teaching me to think of, it was my sister-in-law, sorry friends, Julie, who was born with physical and mental disabilities. But Julie taught me to think of her not as disabled, but differently abled. Julie could think of a pattern or a design for a piece of clothing or a craft. She could follow through to make that an attractive project. There's no way I have that ability. Julie would design beautiful, colorful, creative crafts. She was gifted by God with many talents. It was my Uncle Dale, my mother's baby brother, who was carried everywhere by my, my grandfather. Uncle Dale had to be carried for the first three years of his life until he finally could learn to walk and finally was physically able to walk. I remember my mother telling me that Uncle Dale rode his bicycle to the Acme Grocery Store in Wilmington, Delaware, their home city, where he interviewed for a job as a shelf stalker that lasted more than 30 years. Uncle Dale was gifted by God with the talent of drawing cartoon figures, and he remembered baseball and sports statistics of many professional players better than many folks. After I read this article to Mom and to Phil, Phil privately messaged Claiborne to ask if he might call Mom and update her on his life since 1960 when Mom and her sister Jeanette had returned to New Jersey. A couple of days later, Phil got a message from Claiborne that he would phone Mom over this past weekend. Sunday evening, Mom called to tell us that Claiborne called her. She, she said he also told her he would call her back in a couple weeks. Mom is so thankful to hear from him and to hear his wonderful voice. Claiborne has become a popular motivational speaker to different agencies and groups. Both Mom's and Claiborne's lives have inspired me to remember one of my favorite Christ Church choir anthems. It's called, I Have Only One Life to Live. And it's the words and music were both written by Ruth Artman. This is how the song goes. I have only one life to live. One life is all I have to give. And I want to be a child of thine. Dear Lord, be mine, be mine. Help me to see your face in others. Help me to treat all men as brothers. As I live day to day, may I walk thy holy way. Looking to thee above, grant unto me your faith and hope and love. I know that my life came from thee, and thy love is boundless for me. I believe that your Son showed the way for me, and will lead me to eternity with thee, to glory on high with thee. O oh Lord, may I dwell with thee. I have only one life to live. One life is all I have to give. Be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Be near each day, I pray. Show me the master plan for my life, dear Lord. Friends, you and I may never know this side of heaven, those we've influenced to believe in the Lord Jesus. Therefore, we need to keep persevering in sharing the truth, the hope, the love, the grace, the forgiveness, and the mercy of Jesus to those around us. We can trust the Holy Spirit to transform lives for the kingdom of God. Thanks be to God.